What's going on everybody? Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing my video with my crazy uh, quarantine hair here. <laughs> I'm going to be going for a haircut later on today. So I figured why not do my video with my quarantine hair in all its afro glory. Uh, we'll call it the uh, quarantine hair challenge. How about that? But don't worry, this is the only video you'll have to see it. I am getting it cut off later today. So today we're going to be talking about TVs uh, versus projectors and I'm gonna be giving you some information that hopefully will help you decide on whether to get a TV or a projector for your room. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. And if this content does help you out, please do me a huge favor and hit the like button. All right, without further ado, let's get into this video after the intro. All right, welcome back guys. Uh, before I get into the video, um, as I stated in, in my previous video, I'm gonna be doing a movie of the week down in the description. So the movie of the week is basically going to be a 4K title that is $20 or under. So if you guys are interested in that, just click the link down in the description. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about televisions versus projectors. Uh, hopefully the information I give here is gonna help you make a decision if you are on the fence for either a television or a projector. So in my list of things to look at when comparing a TV and a projector, there is one that I include that is commonly overlooked. So make sure you stay for the whole video. So the first thing we need to discuss is what space is this going into? Are you gonna be putting this into a room that has lots of ambient light, lots of windows? Are you putting this into a dedicated home theater room that you can control the ambient light? So if you do have a dedicated home theater room where you can control the ambient light, um, for the most part it is a no-brainer to go with a projector. You cannot beat the cost versus size ratio uh, of a projector. A TV just can't compete. For the most part you can't even get a television as large as a projector. Yeah there is a Samsung television which they call the wall that is basically panels that you put together and you can build a large television but the cost on that is astronomical. But if you are putting this in a room that does have a lot of ambient light or a lot of windows that you either don't want to control or can't control uh, then most likely you're going to be wanting to look at a television. Yeah, you can still put a projector in that room, but you're not going to be as pleased because you are going to get a lot of washout because of the ambient light. Yes, there is uh, some screen materials that we'll talk about later on that can help this, but it's still not going to compare to a television. And as a side note or an additional note, um, depending on how bright the room is, you may actually want to look at different uh, television technology as well. An OLED is not going to perform as well in a bright room as an LCD, and that's simply because they can't get as bright. But the whole LCD versus OLED discussion is for a whole other video. That's all I'm going to touch on on that. So another major deciding factor is the ease of use as well as the ease of installation. For the most part, a television is going to be plug and play. Most people know how to hook up a television by now and wall mounts are very easy to use if you do want to mount it on a wall. But again, with a television, you can simply put it on a TV stand. And again, most of your uh, electronics are gonna be close to the television, so plugging them in and getting everything hooked up, uh, everything's kind of nearby. There's not much you need to think about regarding hooking everything up. Unless you do have a dedicated um, media room or you have your media rack in another room, then of course you're gonna have to look at how you're gonna hook everything up. Uh, but for the most part, uh, TV is generally easier to hook up than a projector. When it comes to projectors, there's usually a lot more involved than a television, unless you're getting an ultra short throw projector, then there is a little less involved because again, it is close to all the electronics. But a short throw projector isn't necessarily a great solution for everybody. In most use cases, guys are using a longer throw projector than a short throw projector. But just so you know, that is another option as well as to look into a short throw projector. You still do need a projector screen for that, but you are able to place it a lot closer to the screen so that it's closer to all your other media devices. So let's talk about the installation of a projector. So for the most part, uh, a projector is gonna be installed either high up on your back wall or mounted to your ceiling. So with that comes a few more requirements. Uh, you're gonna need power nearby. You may need an electrician to put some wiring in the ceiling for the projector or an outlet for the projector on the ceiling, as well as if it's high up on the back wall. You may not necessarily wanna run a long extension cord uh, to an outlet that is closer to the floor. And with the projector being that far back from uh, your screen, chances are your media devices are going to be farther away from the projector as well. So you may have to run an HDMI cable either through the ceiling or through the wall to get to the projector. Unless you don't mind your cables being visible, then you could always run it on the outside of the wall. That is an option as well. But regardless, you will need a longer HDMI uh, cable to connect it in most cases. So besides uh, mounting the projector and all the complications that come along with that, you will also have to choose and mount a screen for the projector. And along with that, you do need to think about the uh, throw distance of the projector, how far you can place it back. Uh, that does come into play for what size of screen 
you can have. Uh, it's not like you can just decide, I want this projector and I want a 200 inch screen. That's not really how it works. There are some limitations there as to how big of a screen you can have versus how far back the projector is. And that of course also depends on the projector. So make sure you keep that in mind when shopping for a projector. Another thing to consider when shopping for a projection screen is whether or not you're gonna require an acoustically transparent screen. And for those of you that don't know, all that means is it's a screen that allows you to place your speakers behind it without affecting the acoustics too much. There is a slight effect on the acoustics, but it's negligible. But it will allow you to place speakers and subwoofers behind the screen. Another thing to consider is there are screens that will boost the contrast of your projector uh, based on the material used or the colors of the materials used. So that's another thing you will need to look at. And in addition to that, there's also screens that help reject ambient light. So if your home theater projector is in a room that has a little bit more ambient light, uh, you can look at getting an ambient light rejection material. But keep in mind, it is not a miracle worker. And if you do have a really bright room, it's gonna help a little bit, but it's still not gonna magically make all the ambient light go away. The last thing to consider when shopping for a projection screen is whether or not you want it fixed or if you want like a drop down style uh, projection screen. There is also a way that you can have a fixed screen that does lift out of the way using some sort of hydraulic shock or cable system. Uh, so that is an option as well. And lastly, you may want to look at what aspect ratio you want for your screen. Um, there, the two standards are kind of the 16 by 9 or the 2.39 by 1 aspect ratios. Um, those are the most commonly used ones in cinema. Of course, your projector itself can usually do both. And some projectors you have uh, a memory setting so that you can have it set for 16 by 9 and other aspect ratios by the press of a button and the projector itself will make the adjustments on the screen. But you do need to decide on your screen size on which one you want to accommodate because a 16 by 9 aspect ratio is taller than uh, 2.39 by 1 and the 2.39 by 1 is wider than a 16 by 9. So you can get a screen that will accommodate both or even more aspect ratios than those two, uh, but that is just something to think about again, what your preferences will be. But those are all the things that you need to consider when uh, looking at putting up a projection screen. And the third major thing that you need to think about is sound. Most televisions do have speakers built in. Uh, some of those speakers aren't very good and some of them are starting to get a lot better. They do sound decent for a TV speaker. Of course, they won't compare to a soundbar or a full on surround sound system. They're never gonna sound as good as that, but they have come a long way. So with the television, external speakers or a soundbar and subwoofer aren't a necessity. They definitely improve the experience, but it's not a necessity. The TV does provide sound on its own. Now, when it comes to projectors, there are some that do have speakers built in, but they're not very good. And who wants the sound coming from above them and behind them? The sound coming from above you or behind you isn't gonna sound very good either. It's kind of distracting and it takes away from the immersion. So generally speaking, you are gonna require external speakers or external sound from the projector to give you a decent experience. Whether that be a sound bar or a sound bar and subwoofer or a full on surround sound system, that is up to you, but you most likely will want to get external speakers. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're considering the cost of a projector, unless you are gonna be getting external speakers, regardless if you're getting a television or a projector. All right, so the fourth thing you need to consider is resolution. The standard for most televisions nowadays is 4K. Yes, you can get some smaller TVs that still come in 1080p or lower, but for the most part, if you're getting a large television, it will be at least 4K. And now even 8K is a thing, but 4K is pretty much the standard. But again, with projectors, it is slightly different. Uh, 1080p is still pretty common with projectors. More and more are transitioning into the 4K or 4K resolution. And all 4K is, is basically several 1080p pictures with the pixels slightly staggered so that it does give a crisper, uh, better image. So it is better than 1080p, but not quite as good as native 4K. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for a projector, there is 4K and then there is true 4K. And another thing to keep in mind with the projector is a 4K projector typically does add to the cost of the projector. Okay, so the fifth thing to consider is your budget. Although the gap in prices between a good television and a good projector are narrowing, there is still a gap there. My advice here regarding budget is don't be too impatient. Um, if there is something that you have in mind because it has a much clearer picture or a much better picture than the cheaper model, I would say just have a little patience, save a little bit more money, put more aside so that you can get the projector or the TV that you want. Uh, there is a big difference in picture quality between a cheaper and a more expensive uh, TV and projector. So again, keep that in mind when you're determining your budget. If you do have your heart set on a specific one, try not to settle for the cheaper model simply because it is cheaper. You may end up disappointed and then you would end up upgrading in the future anyway, which is just gonna cost you more money. 
The sixth thing that I like to compare when uh, looking at TVs and projector is the one that is commonly overlooked, and that is input lag. So to some of you out there, input lag is not going to be of importance, but to some of you it definitely will. So for those of you that don't really game on your projector or television, input lag isn't something that you're going to be concerned with, but for those of you that do game, input lag may be of concern. If you're just a casual gamer and you don't really care if you win or lose, you just do it for fun, then input lag again isn't necessarily something that you're going to concern yourself too much with. But if you are a little bit competitive and you want every little bit of that edge to help you win, then input lag is something that you need to look at. Although projectors are improving their input lag um, as the years go on, they still can't compete with televisions. Especially televisions that are now incorporating game specific features to help the gaming experience. For instance, in my Samsung QLED TV, it does have a specific game mode that greatly reduces input lag regardless if I'm using a 1080 picture or a 4K HDR picture. And it also does support FreeSync. Um, for those of you that don't know, that basically just helps reduce uh, screen tearing. Uh, so for fast movements, often you'll see the screen kind of not matching up and FreeSync just helps reduce that or mitigate that. So for those of you that uh, input lag is important, that is something to consider as well. If you are going to be gaming on your projector, expect there to be a greater input lag and depending on which TV you choose, expect there to be a significant input lag as well. So on a side note, if your space and your budget does allow, you may want to consider doing both a television and a projector. A television being for gaming and a projector for movies and all other media. That is something that would be an ideal setup for myself personally. When I do have a dedicated room and I do have the space, um, I do want to go with a projector for movies and then a nice large television with some gaming centric features uh, for playing games on. One way you could accomplish this, uh, I don't know if you guys watched Youth Man, but if you don't, you should go check out his channel. Uh, he has an amazing home theater and he has a large screen that he has on gas shocks so that you can lift the whole screen up. That is essentially what I would like to do is have a fixed screen on gas shocks that I could lift up with a television behind it uh, for when I want a game. And then of course, when I want to watch a movie, I can simply drop that screen back down and use a projector for watching TV. So that is just something to consider if you do want to do both. So that pretty much sums up this video guys. I hope it does help you for those that are shopping for a TV or a projector. And if it did help you, please make sure to hit that like button. Uh, it does me a huge favor and it helps out my channel. And if you are new here, please do subscribe and tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. Thanks again for watching. Say goodbye to my quarantine hair. And as always, stay techie.